Okay, so this morning I am going to show you how to use our InfoBase online databases. InfoBase databases include uh, American History Database, Ancient and Medieval History, Modern World History, and World Religions are the four databases that we subscribe to from InfoBase. They all work pretty much the same way. So today I'm going to um, demonstrate using our Ancient and Medieval History Database, but these instructions will work for any of those four databases. Um, so for the basics, once you've clicked in to the database that you want to use, if you have a specific topic that you want to search for, um, then you can just type it into the box in a similar way that you would um, for if you were doing a Google search or Wikipedia. So let's say I wanted to learn about Cleopatra. And you can see that it, it can figure out what you're trying to type sometimes. And so it will... Um, you can click on that or you can type yourself, you know, if, if it's it, guessing wrong. And then it will come up for you with a list of articles that are available for you to use um, in that database. You can click into an article um, and you can read that article. You can, from there, you can save it, you can print it, you can share it. If you click share, it'll give you a URL, you can embed it, or you could email it to somebody. Um, it even has a share to Google Classroom if you have a Google Classroom to share it to. You can download it. Um, the, one of the best things it'll do for you is it gives you the citation. So it's very important for all of you that you cite your work uh, in your papers. So if you click on the citation, it gives you three choices, MLA, Chicago Manual of Style, and Harvard. Most of the time you're going to be using MLA here in school. So it's already there, and all you have to do is highlight copy and then paste into your document and you have your citation. Um, so that's a really helpful tool for you. Um, it also has a bunch of tags down the side. So you might be doing some research. These tags might help you come up with other sources or other search terms that you could use, or you could even just click on the tag and have it take you into a different document. Um, let's go back out and it'll take you to another list. So let's actually go back out though to the main page um, and look at some of the things that it has. In addition to just regular articles, these databases have primary sources. Primary sources are great for research. Um, they are sources that were made at the time that you are researching or by the person that you are researching. So that's a very useful tool. And you could see when we researched Cleopatra, bring it back up here. When we researched Cleopatra, one of the things in here was primary sources. So I could have clicked on primary sources and it would have shown us what our options were for that. We could click on that. It looks like um, an entry from a book at the time that Cleopatra lived or about the time that Cleopatra lived. Another really great um, tool in here, there's a lot of featured maps and graphs, um, videos and slideshows and um, people. And the front page gives you featured information, but you can of course always go looking for them and it has there under the browse resources area also, and topics A to Z. Um, under curriculum tools, uh, this is very useful. Uh, you might be asked by your teacher to analyze primary source or an editorial cartoon. Um, you might need some help with citing your sources or um, some tips on avoiding plagiarism. Um, for those of you that have been asked to use other web resources outside of our databases, you might be expected to evaluate those resources. So this is a really good um, tool right here, evaluating the online sources. If you click on that, it gives you some things that you should look for when you are evaluating your sources. Um, is the material correct? Who wrote it or who published it? Um, is it current? Is it objective? And how, what does the layout of the website look like? Those are some good things to look for when evaluating your online sources. So I know some of you may need to do that if you're using sources outside the library for your project. So that's a great tip. Um, you do have an advanced search option. Most of you will probably use the regular search, but you can search the advanced search and you can limit only to articles. If you're really looking just for pictures, you can search only images. Um, but I don't think you really need to do that. Most of you, the main search will be fine. The other thing that you can do is there is a My Research folder up here. We do not provide you with an account for this database. Um, you do have the option of signing up for an account, 
um, unfortunately, this particular database does not use Google. Um, so you have to sign up for an individual account. And that means if you lose your account information, we can't really retrieve it for you, um, which I know can be frustrating. But if you want to you create an account so that you can save um, your searches or articles that you have found in your searches, then you may do that. Just know that we may or may not be able to help you if you lose your um, information on how to log in. So you'll need to make sure you keep track of that really well. So that's a basic overview of the InfoBase databases. Um, remember, there's four total, but this is just one, and they all work pretty much the same way. Thanks for listening, and have a good day.